Hi guys, I got some new software so I'm trying a different type of video today. Um, I came across something and I thought it would be appropriate for us to share, for me to share it with you, um, especially in the times that we're in. So let's get started. So the 13th Amendment. The 13th Amendment, as we know it today, is uh, about uh, freeing uh, the slaves. So, in Section 1 of the 13th Amendment that we know today, it says, Neither slavery nor involuntary servitude, except as punishment for crime, whereof the party shall have been duly convicted, shall exist within the United States or any place subject to their jurisdiction. In Section 2, it says Congress shall have power to enforce this article by appropriate legislation. Now, I had heard years ago that there was a different 13th Amendment. And back then, it was really hard to find anything online about it, so um, this, of course, was before I knew about DuckDuckGo, so I don't know, maybe maybe you just can't find it on Google. I'm not really sure. I haven't tried it on Google. I use DuckDuckGo because it gives me more information. So I came across this website, and it is the real 13th article of amendment to the Constitution of the United States, Titles of Nobility and Honor. Amendment Article 13. If any citizen of the United States shall accept, claim, receive, or retain any title of nobility or honor, or shall without the consent of Congress accept and retain any present, or any present pension, office, or emoluments of any kind whatever from any emperor, king, prince, or foreign power, such person shall cease to be a citizen of the United States of the United States and shall be incapable of holding any office of trust or profit under them or either of them. It goes on to say the real 13th Amendment shown above was ratified on March 12, 1819 with the vote of, of the Virginia Assembly to publish the revised code of the laws of Virginia with this article of amendment included in the Constitution of the United States, and thus it became an integral part of the Constitution for the United States of America. This amendment added a heavy penalty not included in the original exclusion of titles of nobility provided in Article 1, Section 9 of the Constitution. Upon any person holding or accepting a title of nobility or honor or receiving any emolument other than their legitimate earnings under any guise from external sources by making that person cease to be a citizen of the United States and incapable of holding any office or trust or profit under them or either of them. This amendment was proposed properly ratified and was a matter of record in several states archives until 1876 by which time it was quietly and fraudulently disappeared never repealed during the period of the reconstruction after the civil war and the presently and the presently acknowledged 13th amendment was substituted the original records of the real 13th Amendment were thought to be destroyed at the time of the burning of the Capitol during the War of 1812, but have since been found in the archives of the British Museum Library in London and in the archives of several of the states and territories. The fact of its existence has been lost to the memory until researchers accidentally discovered in the public library at Belfast, Maine, a copy of the 1825 Maine Constitution and that of the United States, which includes this amendment. Subsequent research shows that it was in the records of the ratifying states and subsequently admitted 
states and territories until 1876. The last to drop it from record was the territory of Wyoming after 1876. The most intriguing discovery was that the 1867 Colorado Territory edition, which includes both the missing 13th Amendment and the current 13th Amendment on the same page, the current amendment, the thir cur current 13th Amendment is listed as the 14th Amendment, and in 1867 Colorado edition, oh, the current 13th Amendment is listed as the 14th Amendment in the 1867 Colorado edition. The 1876 law of Wyoming similarly shows the missing 13th Amendment, the current 13th Amendment, freeing the slaves, and the current 15th Amendment on the same page. The current 13th Amendment is listed as the 14th Amendment, and the 15th Amendment is listed as the 15th. The current 14th Amendment being omitted in the 1876 Wyoming edition. Graphics of these may be viewed by clicking on these links, and it's got that. So I was wondering, well, what's the 14th Amendment? The Wyoming isn't showing. The 14th Amendment addresses many aspects of citizenship and the rights of citizens. The most commonly used and frequently litigated phrase in the amendment is equal protection of the laws. So that's what the 14th Amendment is. The founding fathers of our nation held an intense disdain and tr distrust for privileged nobility as a result of, of a long history during colonial times of abuses and, ex, and excesses against the rights of man and established common law and constitution by the privileged nobility and therefore placed in the new constitution two injunctions against the use of recognition of titles of nobility or honor. The acceptance to, many, to any emoluments, whatever, from external sources, the first pertaining to the federal government, Article 1, Section 9, and the second pertaining to the individual states, Article 1, Section 10. The Revolutionary War for Independence was primarily waged to eliminate these abuses and excesses of the nobility from the life of the nation, recognizing the equality of all men. As there was no penalty attached to accepting, claiming, receiving, or retaining a title of nobility or honor or emoluments in the Constitution as originally ratified. The Thirteen Amendments, the Thirteenth Amendment was proposed in December of 1809 to institute penalty for accepting or using a title of nobility or honor to set oneself apart from or superior to or possessing of any special privileges or immunities not available to other citizens of the United States. It also instituted the same penalty for accepting and retaining any present pension, office, or emoluments of any kind whatever from any emperor, king, prince, or foreign power. An emolument is a payment in any form for services rendered or to be rendered or as understood today as a graft or a bribe. Thus it was that on January 18th of 1810, Senator Senators led by Philip Reed of Maryland issued their first version of the proposed amendment to the Constitution now known as the T-O-N or T-O-N-A, or more properly, the original 13th Article of Amendment to the Constitution for the United States of America. Records show that the vote to send the final version of the amendment to the states for ratification was taken on Thursday, April 26, first, a motion to delay voting on the proposed amendment was defeated 8 to 20. 
Then the proposal was approved by a margin of 26 to 1, with seven senators either absent or not voting. Biographical data of the center, senators in office at the time of the vote on the amendment made it fo may be found in Appendix 2. They were very able and worthy men, some of most extraordinary and illust illustrious Americans of that day. All right. Uh, let's see what we got here. I don't know what that noise is in the background. I thought it was my heater and I turned it off and it's still doing it. So I, I don't know what it is. I don't, it's very strange, but we'll just try to press on. Um, the House of Representatives voted to approve the amendment May 1st, 1810 with considerable support both from Federalists in New York and Massachusetts and Democrat Republicans in the South. The amendment was approved by vote by a vote of 87 to 3. 18 of the 21 members from Virginia voted for it. 17 of the 18 members from Pennsylvania voted for it. And while those from New York numbered 7, 4, 1 against, with 6 absent or not voting, Rhode Island Robert Jackson Jr. was absent, but the Revolutionary War Elijah Potter voted for it. Uh, the first state to ratify the amendment was Maryland, which did so on Christmas Day, December 25th, 1810. A table shows the dates on which the remaining states voted to ratify or reject the amendment is shown at this hyperlink. So also are shown the official publications which researchers have uncovered in the various archives. The researchers are now in physical possession of other extant volumes of the same after years of searching old bookstores and auctions. The researchers' collection also includes many private printings and newspapers that contain the 13 in its proper place. So, this is quite a lengthy article here. And what I'll do is I'll put a link to this web page in the description of the video so that you guys can go and read the rest of it if you so choose. But I just thought that I would share this information with you so to give you some understanding of maybe this is part of what's going on today. I, I don't know. Um, I'm just putting that information out and... You, there are other sites, too, that you can find where, you know, different takes on the same topic. And, you know, there, this isn't without controversy. There are some that are against it, you know, that don't think that it's a true story. I, I don't really know. I can only show you what I have found out about it. Um, I, I'm, not, I'm not real sure. So why don't you guys, if you're interested, take a look and leave me a comment and let me know what you guys think. Just a couple things to add on to what I said earlier in the video. Um, another one of the paragraphs in this article, which I noticed that this was published on 1-26-2015. Now, when I had mentioned earlier that I had heard about this, it was well before then. I want to say I had heard about it back in maybe 2008, and that's when I started to look for it online. And there, like I said, there was very little about it. So, anyways, let's get to this one paragraph that I really wanted to share with you and put into this video. The real importance of the 13 titles of nobility and honor amendment to our American Republic soon to enter upon a new millennium, lies in its origins. Its original purposes were, A, to protect the state and federal election processes from bribery, graft, and political chicanery, and B, to shield the federal government itself from both espionage and domestic intrigue of foreign agent provocateurs by placing a severe penalty on citizens so engaged. 
So that's why I think this has a lot to do with what we're going through right now. It is most important to note that the same conditions prevail today, only more so. And the need for the 13th Amendment is even greater today as we enter a new millennium and the United States, with the United States interfering in the affairs of the nations of Europe and Asia, with China and other nations buying voting blocks with illegal donations, i.e. emoluments, grants, and bribes, to the campaign fund and personal pockets of presidents, senators, and congressmen, and others of our elected and appointed servants. With lobbying groups and multinational corporate corporations, which might properly be termed foreign powers, doing the same. With the duplicit invents in the unprincipled, unethical, and immoral conduct of a number of our elected representatives, we have who have subverted the Constitution at every step, who would destroy the sovereignty of the United States of America with the repudiation of good sense of the policy of non-interference given by President Monroe in the Monroe Doctrine. Clearly, the 13th Amendment was written to stop the depredation of ambassadorial level spies like Francis Jackson of Britain and corrupted officials like General James Wilkinson and Aaron Burr. Wilkinson was definitely a Spanish royal agent. All the rest is in a, incidental. The large number of lawyers and men who served as judges either before going to Congress or after voting for the title of nobility and honor amendment indicates that this was not about anyone's monopoly power of lawyers at the time. The continuous fight over banking in that area in that era was part of the background of this process, but not the motivation for the men who wrote or supported this measure. The 13th Amendment was a measure against British imperialism in the wake of their alliance with Spain, and it was supported by Federalists who were imminently suspicious of the Democratic clubs fomented by the Bonapartes, who always followed a Republican revolution with their own seizures of power and creation of new titles. So that's a little bit more on this article. Um, the more I'm reading it, the more it seems like this really does come into play. In what we're going through today. So, I will leave you with that. And, um, like I said, put your thoughts in the comments below.